Our last lesson ended on a sad note. Stephen was killed by the same people who killed Jesus. He died for telling people about Jesus, not for doing anything wrong. He died for doing what was right. It was a sad day for Christians. The Bible tells us that the other Christians came and buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Stephen sure didn't have any regrets. Remember what he said with his dying breaths? Not, well, I give up, I take it all back, please stop killing me. No, he looked up to heaven and saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God, and he said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And then he said, Lord Jesus, do not hold this sin against them. And then he died. But it's not like he lost. He was standing with Jesus in heaven. It was, it was a sad day for Christians, but not for Stephen. He shared in the honor of suffering and dying on account of Jesus, and he still lived with Jesus. Stephen was the first Christian martyr. Do you remember what a martyr is? A martyr is someone who's killed because of their work for Jesus. And do you remember what the word martyr means? It means witness. Being killed for Jesus was the ultimate testimony about Jesus. It showed everyone the power of the Holy Spirit, that you really believed what you preached, that you knew that because of Jesus, you really can't lose, because Jesus gives life that no one can take away. Now, here's the question I asked you to think about for today. Do you think that by killing Stephen, they would stop God's church from growing and scare people from telling others about Jesus? Or do you think that the good news about Jesus would still be a tidal wave that no one could stop? We're about to find out. At first, it didn't look good for Christians. Stephen's death was like a spark that started a forest fire. The Bible says that on that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Persecution means that people attacked Christians for what they believed. It was like a war broke out against Christians. The person in charge of the attacks was the same person who was in charge at Stephen's death, the young man named Saul. The Bible says that Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off men and women and put them in prison. When the persecution broke out against Christians in Jerusalem, many of them fled the city. They scattered all around the country, throughout Judea and Samaria. Many of those who, who didn't flee got thrown into prison. Saul and his men would actually go into their homes and drag them off into prison. It sounds like an awful setback for the mission of God's church. And I suppose I could understand if someone guessed that Stephen's murder and the persecution that followed, that it did stop Christianity from spreading. But it didn't. It actually had the opposite effect. The Bible says that those Christians who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Because Jesus had sent his Holy Spirit, Christianity could not be stopped. It was like a tidal wave. Not even all the hate in the world could stop it. For now, the apostles would stay in Jerusalem to keep preaching about Jesus there. But one of the Christians who left Jerusalem was named Philip. Remember that he was one of the seven men who had been set apart to help the apostles distribute food to the poor. Apparently, he couldn't stay in Jerusalem to do that anymore, but God still had a plan to use Philip. The Bible says that he went to a town in Samaria and proclaimed the good news about Jesus there. And God also gave him the power to perform miracles and to help many people in order to show that what he was preaching really was true. And then after a while, God told Philip to leave Samaria and go to a road that went from Jerusalem to Gaza. On his way, Philip met a man who was traveling down the road in a chariot. This man was from Africa. He was an important government official for a nation called Ethiopia. He worked for the queen. He believed what God said in the Old Testament, and he had gone from Ethiopia to Jerusalem to worship at the temple. And now he was making the long journey back home. He was reading the Old Testament, actually from the book of Isaiah, while his chariot made its way along the road. 
Philip came up to his chariot and asked him if he understood what he was reading. The man said, I need someone to explain it to me. This is the passage he was reading. It said, He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. The man asked Philip, Who is Isaiah talking about? I think you may know who Isaiah was writing about. He was writing about Jesus dying on the cross. So, starting with that very passage of scripture, Philip told the man the good news about Jesus. And the Holy Spirit opened the man's heart to believe the good news that Jesus is the Savior that God promised in the Old Testament. Philip taught the man quite a bit as they traveled along the road together. One of the things that he taught him about was baptism. So when they came to a place where there was, where there was water, the man asked if he could be baptized. They stopped the chariot, and Philip baptized him. And as soon as Philip baptized him, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the man didn't see him again. But, but he still traveled the rest of the way back to Ethiopia rejoicing because he knew that Jesus was his Savior. And what do you think he did when he got back to Ethiopia? I bet he spread the good news about Jesus there. The gospel was spreading from Jerusalem to Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, the stuff that we learned today was a really hard time for Christians. Imagine how sad they were when Stephen was murdered, and how scary it was for the people who got dragged off and thrown into prison, and for the Christians who had to run away from their homes in Jerusalem and find other places to live far away from home. I wonder if any of them wondered from time to time if God really was taking care of them, or, or maybe he had forgotten about them. Because these really were hard times. But can you see how God was using these really hard times to accomplish his mission of spreading the good news about Jesus? As hard as the bad guys were working against Jesus, and as hard as it was for Christians, God was using it all to serve his good purposes. And, and that's good for us to remember too, because God still works the same kinds of good through the hard times that we go through. We often can't see the good things he works through our hardships, at least not right away. But we have his promise that Jesus is at God's right hand, ruling over all things for the good of his people, and also for the salvation of people who do not yet believe in Jesus. Homework. I'm going to give you two things. The first one is to keep on working on the project I gave you last time, and that's to find a creative way to teach any of the stuff that we've learned so far in the Sunday School with Pastor lessons. There's lots of stuff to choose from. You could do something like a comic book or draw a picture or make a video. You can do it however you want. Just be creative and find a way to show people what we've been learning. If you want, you can send it in to me next week and I'll share it with the whole group in a video. And the next thing is to read the Bible. Our latest lessons have been coming from Acts chapters 6, 7, and 8. Now that you've learned the things in those chapters, reading it from the Bible should be very rewarding. And that's a great thing to do as a family. The memory work. It's a favorite passage for a lot of people. It teaches us that no matter what happens in our lives, God makes it all work together for our good. God knows exactly how to give us exactly what we need. It's Romans 8 verse 28. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. I have a couple things to share with you. We love because God first loved us. I made a, I made a gaffe. And I made a cross and an angel and a tomb. Happy Easter. Now let's pray. Dear Jesus, when you ascended into heaven, you sat down at the right hand of the throne of God to rule over all things for us. 
you promise that you are in complete control and make all things work for our good. When life is hard and things don't go our way, give us trust that you're in control and you know what we need. Use our hardships to bless us. Also use our hardships to bless others. And give us relief when the time is right. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may not be familiar with the hymn for today. As far as I can remember, we haven't sung it in church before. It's called Stay With Us. When, when you hear it, it may remind you of the two men on the road to Emmaus. We have a guest singer. You may recognize the voice. Jesus, breathe eternal. 